Hi, my name is Michael Smolinski, and I'm the managing editor of Neurology Now magazine, uh, your trusted resource for brain health. Neurology Now is published by the American Academy of Neurology and the American Brain Foundation for people with neurologic conditions, their friends, family, and caregivers, and anyone interested in brain health. With me is Dr. Gary Gronseth, uh, member of the American Academy of Neurology, professor of neurology at the University of Kansas, and member of the Neurology Now editorial advisory board. Uh, Dr. Gronseth just led a press conference about the American Academy of Neurology's new systematic review for the efficacy and safety of medical marijuana in certain neurologic conditions. Uh, thank you very much for speaking with us today, Dr. Gronseth. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. Um, my first question is, what is a systematic review? So a systematic review is where we scour the universe for all the evidence related to a particular topic. So we look for, we try to find every single study that um, was done on a topic to answer a specific question so that we don't miss anything, so that we can be comprehensive. I see. Um, and why did the American Academy of Neurology decide to conduct a systematic review um, of medical marijuana in certain neurologic conditions? So our members, you know, want to know what the evidence is. Mm -hmm. And so we've had several inquiries and uh, decided to do to do this. It's obviously a hot topic. Lots of people are asking questions, so it would, we thought it would be both a service to our members, the neurologists, and also to our patients to be able to tell them exactly what we know and what we don't know about medical marijuana for neurologic conditions. Um, when uh, when re the reviewers, um, mean, when they use the term safety, um, what do they mean? And when they use the term efficacy, what do they mean? So. <clears throat> The safety is related to the harm, so and that includes side effects, uh, which can be a nuisance, or they can be very serious side effects, uh, like seizures or something like that. So, so that's what we mean by that. And then efficacy is, does it work? Does it help the target symptom that we're trying to improve? So does it make you better? Is medical marijuana the same as recreational marijuana? Absolutely not. Um, and the difference has to do with uh, the intent of use. So when a patient takes medical marijuana, they're in intending to help some symptom that's related to a condition that they have. When somebody uses recreational marijuana, the purpose is to get high, it, you know, is to feel good. So there's a big distinction between the two. Um, and are, the, um, are there differences in um, medical and recreational marijuana in terms of the amount of, let's say, THC in it? So uh, marijuana has many different chemicals in it. Uh, the two most important are THC and another chemical called cannabinol. THC is the chemical that makes you high. It's what, it gives you what we call psychoactive effects, but basically it makes you high. Uh, the cannabinol, we think, is the chemical that has more therapeutic properties that's good for certain symptoms like spasticity and MS, for example. And um, Recreational marijuana is manufactured so that there's a lot more THC because the intent is to get high, whereas many of the other forms of marijuana, like pharmaceutical preparations of marijuana, uh, uh, change that so that the cannabinol is high or it's exclusively cannabinol because they're intending to treat you know, some sort of symptom. I see. Isn't marijuana still illegal in most states? So the smoke form of marijuana is Ill illegal in uh, most states, uh, though there are pharmaceutical preparations, uh, there are drugs, pills that contain uh, the chemicals, the active chemicals in marijuana that your doctor can write a prescription for today, anywhere. Are any of those forms of medical marijuana approved by the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration? Yes. Yeah. So um, just to give an example, there's a drug called Marinol, which is approved by the FDA. Um, what were the most important findings from the AAN review? So we, we found, we looked at over a thousand studies, only 33 actually had high enough quality evidence to answer questions related to treating patients with neurologic conditions. Mm -hmm. So 33, not very many. But can I just stop you one sure. moment? Um, maybe just kind of uh, explain to our audience what you mean by a, a high enough quality in terms of the study. So in order to figure out whether something actually is effective or not, you have to study it in a certain way so that you can make sure, for example, that patients wouldn't get better anyway, 
that any improvement is just related to a placebo effect because mm -hmm. we'll all get better if we, if we just take a sugar pill and we become convinced that it's going to help us, we all get better. So the studies have been designed, have to be designed to control for that. So only 33 studies were designed to, you know, mm -hmm. that we could really tell or, or get a hint of the effect of the medical marijuana versus one, you know, something else. I see. Um, so um, I interrupted, sorry, so you were saying um, some of the important findings from the AAN review. So we found 33 articles. Um, the strongest evidence that we found in terms of efficacy was for, so for treating symptoms was for patients with multiple sclerosis. So what we found was that certain forms of marijuana were effective at treating spasticity, the pain associated with spasticity, some bladder symptoms, um, and um, that's about it. It wasn't effective for treating the tremor that many patients with multiple sclerosis have or other symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Um, the other point to make is that um, the only forms of medical marijuana where we found strong evidence were pharmaceutical forms, so either pills mm -hmm. or an oral spray that's available in, in uh, Europe. Um, uh, smoked marijuana, we found two studies, but they were of relatively low quality and they addressed different issues, and so we can't conclude from those whether smoked marijuana helps or doesn't help uh, patients with multiple sclerosis. I see. Were there other conditions um, that the reviewers looked at? Yes, and so uh, we, we looked at all uh, neurologic conditions, but the, the ones that we found evidence uh, for are, uh, was Parkinson's disease was one, so uh, uh, marijuana, medical marijuana did not help the dyskinesias associated with Parkinson's disease, so patients with Parkinson's disease that have had it for a while that have to take a lot of medication for it start to get these extra movements, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't seem to help. Uh, uh, for most conditions, we were, we were unable to make any sort of uh, finding related to um, the use of marijuana in terms of helping. And one to highlight would be epilepsy. So we found several articles uh, regarding epilepsy. They were all very poor quality, and we can't say from that whether uh, medical marijuana in any form is helpful for patients with epilepsy, whether it reduces their seizures. Um, what, one question I have um, to follow up on that is when, when the reviewers, when reviewers say that not enough evidence was found, let's say, for a particular condition, does that mean that the drug doesn't work for that condition. So I'm glad you asked that. So what that means is that we don't know whether it works or not. So when we don't find evidence and we say there's insufficient evidence, that means we don't know whether it works, whether it doesn't work, whether it's harmful, or what the balance between the two are. And that's important, even though it's always disappointing when you, when you embark on this massive effort to review all the evidence. It's important for doctors and it's important for patients to know for example, we don't know whether medical marijuana in any form works for epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Yet, lots of people, you know, are trying to get it, but we don't know whether it works. And I understand uh, patients and their loved ones get desperate, but it's important for them to know. We're not telling them what to do, but it's important for them to know we don't know whether it's going to work or not. Right. Um, so it sounds like more research is needed. Um, are there particular areas, it sounds like epilepsy is, is one of them, um, but are, where, where, are the, where is more research really needed um, in terms of medical marijuana for neurologic conditions? So other than multiple sclerosis, you know, basically every other area, and even a multiple sclerosis, there could be more and better studies. One of, one of the challenges, though, of the future research is um, if you do a study with, say, a smoked form of marijuana, you introduce a very complicating variable. The concentration of the drugs varies from preparation to preparation. And it would be sort of like uh, doing a study where you have some patients and you tell them, go just take a bunch of these pills. Well, how many should I take, doctor? And you don't tell them how many, just take a bunch. 
well, you, you know, it's, are you taking one pill? Or are you taking six pills? Well, when you're smoking marijuana, you don't know how much you're getting. So that's a big challenge in doing research. So the formulations have to be standardized. The, the, probably the best way to do it is to extract the compound and make these pharmaceutical preparations, which are already available, and study those, because then you can control how much of the drug somebody's getting. That's a good analogy, and it's, it's one of the questions that I had um, for you is, um, and, and kind of following on that, let's say I live in a state in, in, in which medical marijuana is legal. I get a note from my doctor. I go to a dispensary. How do I know what I'm getting? Is this like getting a prescription for an antibiotic, let's say, and then going to my pharmacist? It sounds like it's not. You don't know what you're getting. Now, I'm sure there's, you know, uh, people who are, are uh, making smoke forms of mar medical marijuana, you know, who are trying to do a good job, but you really don't know what you're getting. Um, what should patients and caregivers and parents ask their neurologist if they are um, curious about or interested in, can, in trying medical marijuana for a particular neurologic condition? I think the most important thing to ask is, does, uh, doctor, does this work? Does this work for this condition? And the answer may be, if it's spasticity and multiple sclerosis, Yes, it can, it can work, but maybe there are other options that may, uh, your doctor might think is better, but it's an option for that. The answer may be, like in uh, Parkinson's disease, advanced Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, no, it doesn't work. Usually the answer is going to be, I don't know. Why don't, you, why don't we talk about some of the options related to things that we know do work? Mm -hmm. Or, we don't know. Would you be interested in participating in a study to try to figure out what works? That would be a very heroic thing for the patient to do. Um, I, I imagine that part of the discussion with a neurologist would also include some of the side effects, and I want to make sure we at least um, discuss a little bit what were some of the, the adverse effects or side effects that, um, that the reviewers found. So uh, most were relatively mild, but they included feeling high, um, uh, nausea, headache, kind of typical things that you can see with almost any drug, although feeling high is, is definitely kind of unique, particularly with the preparations where there was more THC. Mm -hmm. Some of the more serious uh, side effects, like seizures in some, um, there, were, there were, in one study, two patients were felt to have seizures that didn't have, uh, as we read it, didn't seem to have seizures before that the, that the authors of the studies concluded was related to the marijuana. So <clears throat> marijuana is a drug. Okay, it's a complicated drug because it's got a bunch of chemicals, but it's going to have side effects like any other drug. Whether the benefit or the efficacy, the, the way it helps you is greater than the side effects, you need studies to be able to tell you that. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking time to speak with us today. Um, for more information on neurologic conditions, you can go to www.neurologynow.com. Thank you, Dr. Gronsis. You're very welcome, Mike.